Sapra.
and I can see the process in the MEC for health in the province of KZN, Minister Similani Zulu, the head of department in KZN, fellow members of the media and police. Good morning. I would request that the Minister of Health to be allowed to take off my mask to allow the global community that can only. The nursing community globally is gathered across the world today in commemoration of a special nurse day for the nurses. The special day for the nurses is commemorated within, within the country across all nine provinces and the purpose of the day is for the management and the leadership of the National Department of Health of the whole leadership in, in the South African Ministry of Health and globally to be able to acknowledge and appreciate the good work that the nurses are doing. The purpose of the, the, the theme of the focus of the, of the year of the nurse was conceived in 2019 by the Director General of the WHO, the Director General Tetros. The intention was that this day would be used by nurses to tell their stories to the communities. However, telling their stories in, in the year and at the time of the COVID epidemic, the, minister, the Minister of Health and the whole South African government decided to celebrate differently. Rather than the nurses telling their stories and to use these opportunities to pay tribute to the all nurses in our country, which are almost two thirds of all registered nurses that are viable to practice nursing in South Africa. And we are focusing today across the country at the same time paying tribute to the nurses. I would then request that uh, we sing the national anthem. <clears throat>
the tradition of the noble profession is founded in the Act of Florence Nightingale during uh, the Crimean War, where she was called to tender for the sick soldiers and under very trying condition, the first thing that she did was to bring light. She, she lit a lamp, hence called the Lady of the Lamp. I will then request our Minister of Health to light the lamps, all the, the lamps that are in the table. As the Minister is lighting the lamp, this is a national celebration ritual and it's happening across nine provinces. I will request the MECs for health in the nine provinces to light the lamp, beginning to share the beam of hope that characterized the birth of the nursing profession when the wounded were counted and that gave rise to what is known as epidemiology. How appropriate at the time of the COVID to be rekindling that light as we did in the, in, the, in the time of war. This little light of mine I will let it shine, this little light of mine. I will let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine. and in particular in the uh, KZN province in actually saying the pledge of service for nurses. I solemnly pledge myself to the service of humanity. I solemnly pledge myself to the service of humanity. And will endeavor to practice my profession with conscience and dignity. And will endeavor to practice my profession with conscience and with dignity. I will maintain, I will maintain by all the means in my power, by all the means in my power, the honor, the honor and the noble traditions of the profession. And the noble traditions of the profession. The total health of my patient will be my first consideration. The total health of my patients will be my first consideration. I will hold in confidence. I will hold in confidence. All personal matters. All personal matters. That comes to my knowledge. That comes to my knowledge. I will not permit. I will, I will not permit considerations, considerations of religion, of religion, nationality, nationality, race, 
race, or social standing, or social standing, to intervene between my duty and my patient, to intervene between my duty and my patient, I will maintain. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. The utmost respect for human life. I make these promises solemnly. I make these promises solemnly. Freely. Freely. And upon my honor. And upon my honor. Yes. At the height of the COVID. We take cognizant and it is with humility and respect that we want to observe a moment of silence in recognition of the health workers globally and nurses in particular globally and specifically within South Africa who have actually lost their lives to the, to the plight of the epidemic. Can we observe a moment of silence? I thank you. We will now invite our honorable minister and uh, to, to address the nation on the special day. It's quite a privilege to have the minister joining us on the commemoration of the nurses of the International Nurses Day, and we will just do a short song and say, why don't you shine where you are, where you are, why don't you shine where you are, where you are, why don't you shine where you are, where you are, why don't you shine where you are, where you are, where you are, where you are. Why don't you sting every patient? Where you are? Why don't you test every patient? Where you are? Why don't you screen every patient? Where you are? 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 Thank you very much, Ms. Makanya. The, the Honorable Deputy Minister, Dr. Joe Pasha.
a war against COVID-19, our nurses, consistent with the theme of the International Year of a Nurse and Midwife, individually and collectively, <coughs> as members of the epidemic response team, have given their all in the various stages of our response from community to facility level. Your compassion and your kindness as you listen and allay the fears and the anxieties associated with the scary news of testing positive to COVID-19 infection does not go unnoticed. Your compassion and comfort to patients who cannot be with their loved ones at the bedside through the journey of the COVID-19 is the best gift to our patient, a gift no amount of money can buy. As you nurse our communities during the pandemic, your personal touch is more palpable as you provide a broad range of essential health services, ranging from administering oxygen therapy, ensuring the patient is in the best position for optimal lung function, and by being the only health professional privileged to hold the hands of those who succumb to the unseen enemy of our world. Of the 18 million or more health workers required to achieve the and sustain universal health coverage by 2030, almost half of the shortfall are nurses and midwives. The International Council for Nursing warned of a potentially catastrophic shortage of nurses over the next decade and urged governments to act, act swiftly to turn the situation around. I'd like to commend the South African Nation, National uh, Co Coronavirus Command Council, led by our President, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, in cooperation with the National Minister of Finance and Treasury, who urged all provinces to fill the frozen and vacant posts uh, that are required at all levels of care <clears throat> for the duration of the pandemic and beyond. I'm aware that all provinces are finalizing their recruitment for both the day-to-day -day health services as well as the capacity for case management during the anticipated surge of the pandemic. While the pandemic has magnified the cracks and exposed the impact of unequal distribution of resources between the public and the private sector, we are resolute in ensuring that all health professionals are provided with the appropriate personal protective equipment and the requisite tools of trade. As we celebrate our nurses and midwives, I'd like to affirm our commitment to ensuring that no nurse will be allowed to care for patients without appropriate protective equipment, be it at a community level, during screening and testing, or in the health facility. While the nurses have always worked under intense psychological pressure, the current pandemic is making an extraordinary demand on them both physically and mentally. Whilst it is understood that over time the threat of the infection will reduce, we also know that the mental health impact of the crisis will remain. <clears throat> Retaining and supporting the nursing workforce requires a focus on promoting and protecting their physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. We are committed to support them to deal with any immediate physical and mental health issues and prevent some of the mental health consequences that may not be apparent now but may emerge in the future. In this regard, we have prioritized the development and implementation of the comprehensive program for caring for the carers. Through this program, our frontline health workers would be provided with a safety net across the continuum of care. We'd also like to commend our social partners who have extended support specific to our nurses during this difficult time. <clears throat> the health system's claims to resilience stems from a resilient workforce. No matter where you are or what area of nursing you work in, you can and do make a difference to the public that you serve. Thank you for all that you do on a daily basis. It takes courage to be a nurse, and in the words of Mary Ann Redmacher, I quote, courage does not always draw. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. 
within the nursing fraternity, <clears throat> I'm aware that a number of slogans for the year of the nurse were framed to celebrate their own, ranging from hashtag be that nurse, or hashtag nurse for life, or nurse, hashtag nurses saves lives, or hashtag once a nurse, always a nurse. All of them remain appropriate to capture the spirit of dedication <clears throat> that the nurses have demonstrated in caring for our nation. In appreciation for your services as government, we undertake to give you the ad adequate training, ensure sufficient protection and appropriate recognition of your contribution in the service to the nation. To all the nurses of South Africa and the world, we say a big thank you for carrying the burden of COVID-19 outbreak and serving humanity. We appreciate the choice you made to carry the burden of saving lives during the weakest moment in our journey on earth. We salute you for the professionalism with which you execute the nursing art and provide the backbone of our health services. We salute you for your caring heart and the warm smile that eases the pain and heals the suffering. We salute you for being the source of hope and strength in the dark days of hopelessness and ill health, and often being the last to hold the hand and close the eyes on the last moment that concludes our final chapter on earth. We salute you for your dedication and selflessness with which you give all your all to serve the others. We salute you for your caring spirit of Ubuntu. South Africa salutes you and thanks you sincerely. May God abundantly bless you and reward you and give you the strength and peace. Nurses of South Africa, I salute you. God bless the nurses and God bless South Africa. Thank you very much. It is, with, it is my great honor and pleasure to invite the MEC for Health in the province of KZN, MEC Similane Zulu Tuki, to offer the vote of thanks. Thanks. Good morning, uh, colleagues. Okay, my sound is coming back. <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> um, good morning, oh no, good day. Good day, uh, colleagues. Good day, Minister. Uh, thank you very much. Good day to the uh, leader of the nursing fraternity within the Department of Health. Uh, we, we really appreciate your presence. I wish to greet the head of department, uh, di the director, district director of Eteguin, mm -hmm. Mrs. Msimang, who is with us today. And today we are being hosted, Minister, by uh, King Edward Hospital. The CEO is also with us, Dr. Tami. He's, he's, yeah, he's one of the young doctors that we have in the province. My sister, thank you very much. And most importantly, I wish to uh, greet our nurses who are with us. But I also want to greet the Deputy Minister, uh, Dr. Joe Pasha, and also indicate, Minister, that the members of the Executive Councils from the different pro provinces, the MECs, are with us today. And I would just want to indicate that they are here, particularly for the media. We have the MEC from the Eastern Cape, MEC Gomba. We have MEC Free State, MEC Gauteng, MEC Limpompo. Ms. Mpumalanga, Northwest, Northern Cape, and Western Cape. We greet you all and appreciate your presence, and we do wish to, to appreciate the presence of all the nurses that we have from all those provinces. Minister must indicate that we are very honored as the province of KwaZulu-Natal to be able to host this momentous gathering uh, today, particularly in light of what we are faced with, uh, not just in the province, not just in the country, but, but in the world. Uh, in, in my vote of thanks, I wish to indicate that all of us 
or both as, as politicians and clinicians and the nurses in particular have been called in this particular time to come and serve. And that has been done for a purpose. We are here to serve a particular purpose. It, we could have been uh, employed or we could have been called to serve 20 years from now or 10 years earlier and none of us would have made the difference that we are making today. We really appreciate that and we appreciate the fact that our nurses are committed, our nurses on a daily basis are faced with, with a struggle to choose between life and death but they still come to work and they still treat their patients in a manner that, that, that is expected of them, in a manner that the oath that they took demands of them. We really appreciate that and we understand and know fully well that on a daily basis it is a struggle and we take their lives very seriously and I think as the Department of Health Minister, I can speak for all of us in the Department of Health, not just the province, that we take their lives very seriously and we are committing and are committed to ensuring that their lives are protected. So we will have to put our hands together, work together to ensure that none of our our healthcare workers are infected, but none of our nurses in particular continue to be infected. We realize that we have been getting a number or our list of infected nurses are growing and we are very much worried about that. And it's something that together we should be able to find a solution for. If it means that there is something that we are not doing right, both at a manage managerial level and at a hospital level, we are going to have to correct that. But the commitment we are making as government is to ensure that we stop the infection of, of, of nurses in this particular uh, pandemic that we are faced with and we continue to make our commitment that we are here to make sure that the lives of our nurses are valued because they are the ones in essence who become our who, who become responsible for our lives and and without them we will not be able to fight this pandemic the the nurses are our frontline soldiers and the nurses are as are that important to this department but not just to the department of health to the whole country because right now the only person that is important is the nurse because when you go to any facility that is the person you must you must who must be able to assist you so on those words uh, minister we really appreciate the fact that we have had to host this particular event today it's it's really glorious and it's 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 quite it's it's breathtaking you know, to think that on this particular day we would have met and we would have appreciated the work that the nurses are doing, but we find ourselves having to meet and appreciate the work of the nurses while we are facing this particular pandemic with the nurses that are so committed. So we really appreciate uh, everything that has been done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and this brings uh, the program to an end. Thank you.